Welcome back guys, my name is Nicholas Snow and today we're gonna be looking at some subwoofer and amplifiers and looking at what peak power means versus RMS power because there definitely is a difference and you wanna know before you buy. So stay tuned for the video. First, we're gonna start off with looking at subs and their power rating and what they're really talking about when they give all these different wattage numbers because some companies, they have some what do you call clever marketing tricks that will make you think it can handle more power than what it really can. So if we take a look here, we can uh, take a look at this JL Audio 12W7. Um, we can see down here uh, that it has a recommended RMS power handling of 400 to 1000 watts. And what that means is that sub itself can handle between 400 and 1000 watts constantly without damaging the sub. So if you look at some companies, they will say peak power. And what that peak power means is it is the theoretical limit of what that subwoofer can handle. So for example, if it said 2000 watts peak, that means theoretically it can handle 2000 watts the way they constructed it and designed it, but it's not meant to consistently run at that 2000 watts. So that's very key in remembering when you're purchasing your sub, because if let's say you buy a sub that's 2000 watts peak and you put a 2000 watt amp on it, it's not gonna last long. You're gonna burn a coil, you're gonna do something to damage that sub in the long run. Yes, you might be able to run 2000 watts to it initially and think it's all fine, but down the line, you are going to run into problems with running the peak power on a sub and not that RMS power. So we can see on this JL Audio sub, um, again, we talked about between that 400 and 1000 watts. So what kind of amp would we put on this to run safely? Uh, we can see that this 12 inch subwoofer is a three ohm sub and it can take between 400 and 1000 watts RMS. A good amplifier for this sub would be something like the VXI 1000. So we can come down here on the chart of the RMS power. JL Audio does a great job of showing RMS power and not displaying, you know, peak power or dynamic power. We can see at three ohms right here, it does 800 watts RMS. So we know when we go back to this sub here, it falls in that recommended amplifier power RMS. So we know that if we were to run this amplifier here on this JL12W7, we would have no problem running that, you know, for years and years to come. It is the proper power it's not overpowering it and we're definitely not you know as they have kind of displayed here anything in the voided warranty section which you want to stay away from because again they're not designed to run above their rms power um, another example here would be um, this 12 uh, uh, thin woofer one so it's their uh, 12 tw1 it's a thin woofer line we can see that this sub is two ohms and it has a recommended amplifier power between 75 watts and 300 watts. So obviously we don't want an amp that's gonna do more than 300 watts at two ohms. Uh, a good example for this, um, you know, would be a 300 watt um, RMS amp. Now let's say, for example, on this, you were gonna run two of them. What you were gonna do is just multiply it by two if you're gonna be running two of them on one amp. So 300 times two is 600. So a good example would be this VX 600 because we can scroll down here and see that it does 600 watts. So it would be a great pairing with two of these uh, TW1s. So you really need to look at how much RMS power your sub can handle in relation to how much RMS power your amplifier can give. You wanna make sure those are matched up because if they're not, you can run into a problem and void the warranty on either the sub or the amp 
and that's not going to be a good day when you have to buy something new because you didn't know what the power ratings meant. I want to thank you guys for watching the video. If you have any other questions, comments, concerns, want me to talk about anything else, just drop them down below in the comments and I will be sure to reply to you in the comments. And if enough people say something about it, I will definitely make a video about it because I want you guys to have a better system and know how and what to put in your vehicles, you know, because there is a lot of information that floats around. These companies throw a lot of numbers and phrases at you, and it can be a little hard to kind of digest that information into something, you know, more palpable. You know, that's why I'm here to kind of help you guys kind of break down all the things that companies say to make sure that you're running a safe and efficient system in your vehicle. I want to thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos and don't forget to subscribe.